You are listening and seeing Rock Hard with Jay Conroy. This is great. I am in White Plains Community Media Studios with Rick Augusta and Sal Ader on Rick's show on the road again. And I said, Rick, let's do a bit for my show. This would be then. Well, we both kind of came up with the idea. It wasn't just me. So because you had me on the show. So tell me about this show, because I walked in here. You said, can you come do the show? I said, I would love to. And I came in here and I'm like, oh, my God, this is great. And tell me what's going on here. What are you doing with this? This is fantastic. Thank you. Um, Sal came to me with an idea called On the Road Again and started wheels started spinning a little bit. What do we do with that? People went the extra mile. I started thinking about all the people I know, like yourself, in the music business, and whatever, uh, if they're singers, if they're producers, if they're you know, artists, if they're behind the scenes, if they're cameramen, let's get them on and tell their story, because there's so much rich talent in Westchester, in New York City, yeah. and there's not enough FaceTime for people. So right. figured On the Road Again was for people with the extra mile. We've had some great guests so far. We had uh, Vito Luisi, who's Johnny Winter's drummer. Um, we had uh, Al Heimberger, who owns the Loft Studio in Bronxville. Uh, tons of platinum records have been recorded there, from Rihanna to Rod Stewart. Procol Harum were there. Uh, Robin Trower recorded there. Wow. He deafened the whole neighborhood. Uh, and Matt Noble's coming on, major producer, um, also a bourbon. Um, and um, we keep just... I'm, a, I'm an official bourbon brother, He by is. The way. Well, he's a fifth bourbon. Uh, a fifth of bourbon, actually. And we also have uh, Tony Garuso, who was... Frank Sinatra's uh, last horn man, first, first trumpet. Wow, really? And he just got a, an award for playing on Kanye West album. So kind of what we're trying to do is show music as all-inclusive, collaboration, how it works, how people really become successful, hopefully inspire some people to continue with what they do, believe in themselves, or maybe just start doing something that they thought they could never do by showing success stories and also having some new bands come on that we feel, Sal and I have been watching, who we feel are doing the right things. So on the road again just means, you know, follow your dream. Keep your eyes, the the thing is, you know, keep your eyes on the dream. Right. You gotta keep going. I mean, you know yourself, Jay, I mean, how many times have people, songwriters, somebody says, "I'm, I'm just gonna give this up. I'm not making money. You know, what's my motivation? But people like yourself, you just keep going because you love it. You it's eat the passion it, of it. I love you know? to do it, you know? And I mean, when I started this show, I actually turned it down. You know, a friend of mine was doing a show on a station. And, you know, I used to call the station all the time and, you know, make requests to try to help him out. And the owner said to me, you know, well, I, you could do a show. I said, I don't have time for that. So I told my girlfriend, she, and I said, I turned it down. It was dead silence. Mm-hmm. And she said to me, you spend all your free time listening to rock bands, going on YouTube, watching videos, you know, looking for new bands. She goes, you do this now. Why not do it and put it out there for people? Right. And I said, you know what? She's right. Because that is what I do in my spare time. So it's a beautiful thing. You know, I love it. So, but you know, this thing here that you got is, you know, a great thing. And you're giving exposure to people like myself, like Johnny Winter's drummer, you know, Sinatra's uh, horn player, who would not get that exposure. And they need it. And I, I find that to be actually a sin. Because there's another thing that happens with musicians, and I played with a lot of people, is people get hungry in this business. They want to make it. And rightfully so. That some guy's a better horn player or considers himself a better horn player than the guy on a record. Why am I not there? Right. And the hunger sometimes leads them to go off in places where it won't help them get to their final destination. Because you have to also be humble about it, I think, and allow other people to succeed in your, in your journey because you don't do it alone. No. You know, I mean, look at this show. Uh, we've got Keith Baker behind the camera. We've right. got... We've got James He's doing a phenomenal job, by the you know, way. No, great job. And probably... He's putting all this together. It's fantastic. Yes. I'm sitting here in front of the camera, and I can see a monitor off to my left, and it's just blow away how great this guy is. Now, I will bet that there were probably thousands of shows done in the studio with Keith behind the camera, and I will bet nobody's ever mentioned his name. 
now so i look at it like let's have this journey together you know you can yeah. succeed with each other because you need a guy to video video oh, yeah, a yeah. videographer to take a good you know a video for a band uh, we're gonna have a guy named john Cristal on who's probably the best rock and roll photographer Ooh, john John Cousteau. Oh, I thought you were saying John Cousteau. The no, John Cousteau is you know he's dead, but sweeping, his son's he's, still around. He's sleeping with the fishes, and the man, with, the man with all the ties, <laughs> the ties that we can't talk about. Because Sal I mean, you no, tuned in if you had John Cousteau on. I just found out it's Ader. I think I take the fifth amendment. Sal Ader, no one knew his love at first bite. <laughs> Very big Aerosmith fan. He wrote that about Sal. Um, but you know, I don't. I look at it like, look, I've been doing this a long time. I've had the privilege. The privilege to work with some phenomenal people. I've known Vito Luizzi, he's Johnny with his drummer for my whole life. Right. And you know, who knows in Westchester that he's back in town. Now he's playing with Gene Cornish, grooving with Gene Cornish, and they're gonna be going out as a version of the Rascals with all the great hits. That's interesting. I mean, so I am also getting to do something that you know I enjoy doing, but here's the key for me. I'm learning. You know, I'm, I'm really learning about things because I don't want to go into an interview blindly. You know, you've been doing this for a long time. I've picked up a lot of hints from you. Because yeah, we have talked a lot. I tell you, like, what I do, it's, you know, research. I watch them. If I'm having a guest on, I research everything they do. Right. I watch them in other interviews to see how they're going to be. Right. You know, I try to do my interviews more different, more conversational. You know, just come in, right. chill. I don't want question, answer, question, answer. Let's talk. Right. You know, like we're doing now. Right. And it's kind of like, you know, it's exactly a conversation, but, and you've told me and some other people have said this as well, and it's really what I, I'm trying to strive for, I think Sal is too, is it's your show. If we have you on the show, it's, I, like, I really don't want it to be anything about the things that I do, because I feel like if it's a 30-minute show, and sometimes you fall into the trap of saying, well, you know, the, the guests will say something. But I'm trying to be conscious about the fact that this guy, the reason why I have him a guest on is because he has this 30 minutes of a spotlight and I want him to get out That's where he's going to be Saturday night, right. how he got there, what, what, what you're doing now. And, you know, I feel like it's the karma thing. You got to make your guests look you know? good. You got to make your guests leave happy going, oh, my God, that was great. And believe it or not, a lot of people I learned that from was Johnny Carson. Mm -hmm. You know, Johnny... Would take would take all the hits. He didn't care, you mm -hmm. know. He if something went wrong, Johnny would run with it, and he would make his guests look good. Mm -hmm. And that's who I learned from. You know, I work in TV as well, and you know, watching different anchors and talk to them, and you know, that's where I learned. It's all about homework and make your guests look good. Right. You know, it's you're right. Everybody knows it's your show. Right. You I know. I mean, it's not. It's 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 truly not about. It's not about Us. you. It's not yeah. about me. You know, Jimmy, it's not Fallon, about, it's not about Jimmy Fallon is not about Jimmy it's Fallon. Not. I we mean, want people to shine. Right. Yeah. And it's our, and that's the, our thing. Right. And the people that are coming on, and, and listen, I knock on wood. I really do because, Luckily, again. that is actually wood. It's not wood. It's, it's press wood. But, you know, you know a chipmunk would look at that and say, I'm with You can knock on my head. Give me something to eat. Out of wood. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is why we don't have uh, exterminators here because, you know, we, we don't have anybody chewing on that. That's right. Sure. We don't need that. Uh yeah, definitely no termites in, in White Plains. Did you know that? I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, White Plains is the only town without Did you know Time Out termites. New York just uh, released an article uh, about where the rats are in New York City? You sent me that. Oh, no, no, I saw that on your... On I posted your, right, it. It's totally You type gross. in your zip code and they'll let you know how bad the rat problem is. And they're all in the cellar. So Stephen Tyler was right. The yeah. rats are in the cellar. Yeah. <laughs> you know no. who was right, believe it or not, was Mick Jagger. When he said, you got the rats on the west side, bed bugs uptown, because you go on the west side, yeah, it's rat city. Yeah. When I, I had a, a TV gig, I used to have to sh show up at four in the morning over on the west side. And I'm walking to work, and when the garbage is out, the rats come. Now, mice don't bother me, but rats, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, like mice, they're big. Mice bother you know? me, too. Mice I used to walk in the street. You know, because I'm like, ooh, they come running right in front of you, you know? Yeah. So he was right. And uptown, we do have bed bugs. Yeah. I see people throwing out beds all the time. And I'm thinking to myself, how did Mick Jagger know this? Because he stayed in a lot of grungy yeah, places in the city. Yeah, I don't know. Keith never knew because Keith was always. You're right. But you know, they didn't realize Keith was partying with the bed when bugs. When they go on vacations, they bring them back from these other countries. That's too, true. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, they, they, you know, they different don't, varieties of bed bugs. Exotic, yeah, yeah. exotic I mean, bed bugs. A lot of the hotels. Right. It's a, you know, it's where you pick them up. Which, by the way, is the name of Sal's new band, the Exotic Bed Bugs. That's yeah. that's a great. Very name. good, very good. People will remember that. They do rumba that. and cha cha and okay. yeah, with a punk beat. <laughs> and we make them an offer. They they can't refuse. They better buy it. Or we'll send the bugs after them. So now them. that we got all the silliness out, right. um, we'll send the bugs after them. <laughs> <laughs> so that we are we are we are aiming for the goal of highlighting some of the musicians that are around, and we're getting uh, we booked two months worth of shows now, and we feel like. So far, so good as far great as... Great people. We're getting yeah. great people coming on. And then they all know each other. And Sal always says, talks right. about this. It's, it's all like, about networking. This guy yeah. talks, well, you know, I did this with him. So yeah. it's an ongoing road, which really, it's what it is. From the minute you pick up your guitar, like right after this, I'm actually going to play on another show. Right. That we got invited on, you know, with, with an artist that... You are that nonstop we, running yeah. around. And I love doing it, you know, and but... It, for me, it's really, it's really this too, Jay. I never, ever turned down a gig. I'm talking about never. I mean, maybe there was one time, and it's probably something totally out of my control, but I, I, I've always had that rule because I want to get up and say I'm aiming for something. Isn't that what gets you? You think about your next show. Yeah. And that's exciting, you know? You want to do your next show. You want to get to the next thing. This is like something that I thought would be a departure from the music. Because, you know, we're in the studio, we're trying to put out a fourth album, which we're not trying, but, you know, it's a, it's a little slower pace because we started playing live. So between the live performing, I said, this is going to take me away from sitting in the studio and getting the album done, but it's not. It's actually another another level of it. Another yeah, it all, parallel. Gels, it all gels together. Right, you and know? the truth is, if you don't network, and a lot of people don't know this, I mean, you're really not going to get to where you want to go. Right. Bands need to really work with each other, not like, I'm not going to tell that band about this because I want it for my band. Or I want, you know, that really, you know, it may work for that one gig. But then what happens is they, you know, what if you piggyback with a band and then they invite right. you the next time? Now you're doubling your exposure. Now, now you're doubling your audience. I see bands online that are doing the wrong things. I would never, I would never, and I'm thinking always like, what would that band, what would behoove them to move their ball ahead? They wouldn't listen mainly because not all of them because they are so set in what they think is the right way. Right. Now the person that's open to it might think differently like you and I would. And take well, I can tell you this, that some of my best breaks have come from gigs I did not want to do. I'm like, oh, this is going to be hell, but you know, you got to go do it. You do it, and something great comes out of it, and you're mm -hmm. like, damn. Yeah, you you know, know, it, say, I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many times that happened. They say right. you don't go, you don't know. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, you and you go to some big thing thinking you're going to get something out of it, and nothing happens. Right. So you never know where that's going to happen. Well, you know what road it's going to take it. Yeah. There's many roads. That's why, I like this guy, he keeps getting on yeah. many roads. That's right. You know? The right thing to you do. You gotta. So I want to congratulate you. This is great for you. I'm Thanks, so happy sir. for you. Thank you. Sal got the perfect uh, the perfect guy to come in here yeah. and do this. And that's, Sal's that's great. True. That's, that's true. For, that's for sure. And and Sal's, Sal's great. We were hanging before the show, and it's yeah. just pure, yes. just pure. We're from the you know, same great. neighborhood. We're from the hood. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah, the hit we, man. Yeah. He's the hit man. I try not to tell yeah. people exactly where I live because, you yeah, know, well, you never know. Yeah, well, we ain't going to tell them that. You well, know, in the business, <laughs> you're always going to get haters. So. We're going to get this man out, do a little stand-up comedy. That's his dream. See, now, he just told me that a little while ago, and I said, you know what, Sal? Everybody's got to go their road, man. Well, you just yeah. got to stop doing I it. I feel, I feel, you know, when you reach a certain age, you know. No, 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 no. No, See, you, get, no you get, I you get all these you. aches and pains, so oh. this is what inspired me about doing this. Okay. I want to make fun of it. Okay. Because it is funny when you, it's, it is it is funny when you really stop to think about it, how your whole life changes when you get older. And the things you have to do, even when you go on a vacation, you gotta buy, you gotta have another bag, especially for your medications and your powders and the um, whole nine yards. Starting to get to yeah, that so point you know, now, right? The, There's little things the I things do you now. Gotta do, you know? Yeah, I do things you know, like, now every day you know, for like health reasons. Waking up all night long, you know yeah. what I mean? Watering the flowers and all that stuff. I don't sleep, so I don't know about <laughs> he that. He never sleeps. Well, <laughs> I can't. I'm all, I'm watering the flowers all night long. That's what it is. I, I'll hear from him at 3 in the afternoon. I'll hear from him at 3 in the morning. Uh, this morning much. I texted him, and I'm thinking, I know he's going to be up. It was like <laughs> 7 o'clock. 
He's, yeah. I'm like, do you ever <laughs> sleep? And, I, and I'm always nervous to call him because I figure he's doing a gig or something. The poor guy probably didn't get to bed till 5 in the morning. I, I feel I more call energetic. Him, he goes to me, oh, I'm up. What are you talking about? I'm up. He's you know? always up and going. Yeah, I'll wait till like 10 o'clock. He's got the passion, too, and we've yeah. talked about this. It's all about yeah. the passion. Yeah. You go oh, for yeah. this for it, the passion. It, so do what, what, you do. what an experience, bro, you guys, really. It's great, great experience going around the country. You know, meeting so many people, helping people. It's a great thing. Well, Jay, you know, we yeah. didn't talk about it before, about your roadieing days. And I, I yeah. you know, I mean, that's that's amazing, too, because Vito, who was on, actually uh, mixed monitors for Blood, Sweat, and Tears. And that's where he learned from Bobby Colombo, you know, uh, and just, you know, started talking drums. And he ended up uh, producing Jaco Pastorius. So imagine hanging out with these people, what it did for his... And, that, and again, a guy who was mixing monitors... Ended up learning so much. How yeah. could so you must have learned a lot on the road. I mean, I did learn a lot on the road, and it's fun. It's a lot of work, though. Yeah. You know, a roadie's day is long. Yeah. Well, look at the memories you have. That right? well, yeah, but some of them I think I can't remember too well. Yeah. You know, but you went on the road with the Left Bank. I went on the road with the Left Bank. Uh, I've been on the road with Cindy Blackman Santana. He's married to Carlos Santana. Mm -hmm. um, in the eighties, I did a lot of. Uh, you know, local Rodian. How did you get that job? Newspaper. I I had uh, I had just picked. I said, you know, I got to I got to get I got to do something with music here. I got to do something. And and you know, Rodian was always in my head anyway. And I happened to see an ad in the Aquarian. You know, the Aquarian, right? right the uh, New Jersey newspaper, mm -hmm. great newspaper. And I said, eh, let me check this out. I came down to see the band. You know, they were a party band playing. You know, top forty. They were rated the number one band in New Jersey because not that they were the greatest musicians, but they knew how to promote, throw a party, get people in. They yeah. were very smart marketing. You know, band was Holm, H O L M E. Okay. Uh, in fact, they still play around a little bit. But then when the drinking age went up, that killed the club scene, and you know that was over. And then that led me to mobile DJing. Which you know I did for twenty eight years. See, now that was that road would have never led to the other one. Right. And that's why maybe taking away from it is people who are starting out is take the job. You may yeah. not, it may not be in the precise field you want to be in at right. that moment. But if you don't take that job, I guarantee you someone else will. And it, that's like what I said before. You never know where it's going to come from. Right. That's why you never turn down a gig. Never. You know no. I always say they have to cut both of my legs off. You know to 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 miss the, to miss terrible. a gig. Well, I'd be, you I'm, I'm already short, so I would be like four foot two. You could still two. play. But, uh, yeah, you could prop you I, I would. I would just wear sneakers and like it would, you know, and maybe maybe I'd do some stuff with mirrors, you know, to make me look like, you know, like it Well, like it's all smoke and mirrors anyway. It is. It really is. It is. <laughs> all right. I got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. Keith's right. got to get out of here. Sal Ader, of all course, right. my Good friend, Rick no Augusta. Winnings, love at first bite. Yes, <laughs> Sal Ader. It's a perfect name. Did, you, you must have caught grief about that through the years. This is the first time. No, not really. Oh, because there's a lot of jokes there yeah. that we could go yeah. with. But, you know. Um, so, Sal Ader. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sal, time. for being on the show. Thank you for having me on your show. See, Thanks. this is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. I came to do your show. You, yeah. You've done my show. And we ended up doing your reunion. show. Right. And then we ended up doing your right. show. It's a because family it, reunion. Yeah. It works out perfectly. On the road again. Yeah. So, right. on the road again. It's all good. It's all good. Rick, I wish you the best, bro. You're a good you friend, tomorrow, man. man. You're a good friend. Thanks Sal. for coming again. Thank, Thank you. you. So much. Oh, you got to give Jay a you hug. Listen to Rock right. Hard. Yes, we must hug. We always right. must hug. Careful because we're mic'd up. We are mic'd. All right. Rock Hard with Jay Conroy. Look, they even put my logo up there. Yeah. I'm loving that. So uh, thanks again to Keith for doing all this stuff. So Go to you his site. have been listening and watching Rock Hard with Jay Conroy. Check us out. JayConroy.com. Thank you, guys. Let's do a song from the Bourbons before we go. Rick, what do you want to hear? Let's do Blame Someone. Blame Someone it is. The Bourbons, check clean the Bourbons version. out. Clean version. Do, I don't like the clean I version. I know, man, but I, I, like don't, I don't know where we can get. All right. Well, uh, well, well, on my show, I it's can an play adjective. the dirty it's version. It's not. A, oh, you can. Yeah. Yeah, no, you play the dirty yeah, version. Yeah, I can play the it's, dirty it's version. It's only an adjective, man. It's not a curse word. I always tell you this. It's an adjective. Well, you're very good with words. <laughs> an adjective. I don't even know what that word means. <laughs> I haven't heard adjectives it's a, it's since high school. Look, I can hardly say it. So it's 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 this an is action, your show, right? So it's a it's a mother. Oh, no, a verb is an action. It's a motherly poet. But what it's trying to say is that the song "Blame Someone" is actually about 
someone who's trying to say to his parents, like, what do you, you know, you're, no good for, you're good for nothing. And he knows deep down inside he can write, you know. Right. But it's hard to, it's hard to, uh, to get on with yourself when, when, you know, with your career, when people are always telling you you can't do it, you can't do it. Now you got to trigger yourself to say, I can. So he's trying to tell his mother, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a mother effing poet, right. given half a chance. Right. Give me a chance. And it's great because you do not expect that word in that song. <laughs> right. Like the first time I heard it, it's like, whoa. I'm like, you know, this is like this really cool song coming through. And all of a sudden I was like, right. I'm a mother. I was like, I love this. Right. You know. Well, so it's like, you know, those mothers got a good book in her hand. It's the exorcism of the death rap metal band. She says, junkyard dogs are tearing up my land. And you're never going to get to heaven. But she doesn't understand. Yeah. When it's raining Great fire, they're always, they're always going to blame someone. And that's what they do, man. When there's something going down, they always blame somebody, probably the wrong person, you know? Yeah. So that's what that, that, was, that was the motivation behind that, you know? Don't start telling people they can do things, man. Give exactly. them a little bit of encouragement. Yeah. All right, we got to get out of here. We could be let's here all that. day if we keep going with, with, you know, the right. way you and I go on. We'll, so. So we'll be back here tomorrow. All right, so thank you for having me on, on the road again. All right. And see, now I'm all confused. Uh, thank you for coming to my show, Rock Hard with Jay Conroy. <laughs> Rock Hard with Jay Conroy on the road again. On the road again. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll start combining. Who knows? We'll start combining it. Who knows? So. <laughs> he came in the door and we had his show. 